Hello everybody, thank you for tuning into my channel That Model Railway Guy and I hope you enjoy this video on how I built my latest model railway, Pickwick Yard. I've titled this video Reviving an Old Layout because this is an old layout which I built as a teenager or started building as a teenager but sadly for the last 10 years it's looked pretty much like it looks now uh, albeit sat under a bed collecting dust. As you can see I never got very far with this layout, all I managed to really achieve was laying down some track on a base of uh, cork and a ballast scenic mat. The track is all old Hornby track from about 20 to 25 years ago and even then I think some of it was second hand so it's really not the best track in the world uh, compared to modern standards. Uh, it has been weathered ever so slightly, the sides of the rails have been sort of painted brown and I have used some sort of clump green foliage to kind of uh, represent weeds and kind of make it look a little bit like a rundown yard. In a similar way I've also tried to weather the ballast mat as well just so that it looks less uniform and all the same colour uh, so I've used some watered down dark paints just to kind of create different splodges and make it look a little more random. For anyone interested, the baseboard is actually made from two shelves that have become surplus to requirements and so they were taken down off the wall and actually if you look at the end of the baseboard you can see where the two shelves have been joined together to form one big board. I'm actually going to continue this theme of using whatever I can find around me to finish off the layout uh, simply because this is really a small simple little project to ease me back into it before I attempt something more ambitious. And it also means I have somewhere to uh, play trains as it were while I'm building something much larger. So as you can see, the first thing I did was to plug in a controller and make sure that a loco would run up and down the layout and thankfully everything worked fine. The next thing to do was to put some buildings on the layout and despite not having built a layout for several years, I still have a drawer filled with all the old Metcalf kits that have been built over the years. As this layout is intended to be an industrial shunting yard of some sort, I picked out some buildings that looked like they could be a warehouse or a factory of some sort and just sort of positioned them on the layout where I thought they looked good. Next I decided I wanted a fiddle yard, uh, mainly to increase the operational potential of the layout but also so that I could have somewhere for the trains to come from or, or go to so they could disappear off scene to the rest of the world. As you can see it's a very simple affair, it's just uh, two sidings which allows me to uh, store and set up a train while another one is running. You might also notice that there's a little built-in control panel which uses uh, some very cheap DC controllers I got off eBay. Uh, I discovered these thanks to the Budget Model Railways guys. Uh, if you haven't already then do go check out their channel because it's well worth the watch and they've already done a video on these controllers so I won't go into too much depth here. When it comes to joining it up to the main part of the layout I'm just using the very crude technique of having a small piece of track that just spans the gap between the two baseboards and that seems to work absolutely fine I've had no troubles with it so far as you can see here's a train running over it now and uh, there's absolutely no problems with it at all obviously if this was an exhibition layout then I probably wouldn't rely on something like this but um, you know for home use it's absolutely fine and as you can see the engine runs quite happily from one end of the layout all the way to the other end without any problems or power loss Next up came the back scene which is made from two unused laminate floorboards uh, which were glued together and then painted a pale blue. Then I got some back scene elements of factory buildings from scale model scenery and these were just simply glued down to finish off the back scene. All that was left to do was drill some holes and screw the back scene to the baseboard. You can see there where I've strengthened the join between the two floorboards with uh, gaffer tape but it is glued as well as I said earlier. Uh, but yeah, as I turn it around now you can see that it looks a hell of a lot better already uh, and even with some buildings on as you see now uh, it's starting to look less like a dilapidated train set and a little bit closer to a model railway. I also got from Scale Model Scenery uh, one of their low relief factory kits uh, which is great, it was the perfect size, uh, height and depth and everything for uh, the space that I needed it to fill uh, and it matches their back scene elements as well which is really great. Uh, as you can see I've also used a few of the leftover back scene elements that I had to sort of uh, cap off that corner there. Uh, they're just glued down onto very thin pieces of wood and then I've made it so they can slot together and they hide the hidden siding at the back uh, perfectly. And then I put part of the Metcalf factory kit back in as well because it seemed to fit space really well. Uh, it also had a, a lower roof as well which is great to have a bit of variation there and I liked having the platform and the dock as well so it was like the trains had a reason to use that siding. I also had a go at scratch building a bridge just to cover the entrance to the hidden siding uh, mainly because I couldn't really find anything that fitted the space available. It's mainly made out of cardboard but then I've overlaid uh, Will's brick sheets which have been painted and sort of made to look a bit more grubby and then for the bit that goes across the top I've cut down the side of a Pico Gerda bridge and then again I've painted that and made it look a bit rusty. For my first attempt at scratch building I don't think it's too bad to be perfectly honest. 
This fence was then my second attempt at scratch building, and I'm actually really quite pleased with how this has come out. Uh, it's made from cut down sandwich ties and then painted brown and all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, I actually filmed a load of footage of me making these, but I didn't really have time to fit them into this video. But maybe I'll do a separate video on that if anyone's interested. And as you can see, they quite happily stand at the back of the layout there, just hiding the join between the baseboard and the back scene. Finally, I finished up with a few extra little details like that grounded van body, which I believe was made by my late granddad. Uh, and then I also found these metal signals in the box as well, which I believe were his as well. And so they've now found a new lease of life on this layout. And there you go. So that's pretty much everything. And if we take a quick look through Pickwick Yard now, I think you'll agree it's looking much, much better. And uh, just to prove that it all works as well, here are some shots of some trains running for you, because I know that's what everyone really wants to see. I know it's not the most inspirational looking layout in the world, but actually that's fine as far as I'm concerned. It was never meant to be, but considering it was thrown together using a few odd bits and bobs and whatever I had lying around, I think it looks pretty good. So yeah, I think this is a great little layout, which hasn't taken me too much time to complete. I've already had a lot of fun operating it. Uh, I can run pretty much anything I like on here and it looks great. And yeah, it's definitely got me inspired to work on something a bit more substantial. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for hopefully more videos on maybe a bigger layout in the future. In the meantime though, if you enjoyed this video then please do subscribe to the channel, uh, leave a like and uh, let me know in the comments what you want to see running or anything else you'd like to see on this channel. So uh, yeah, hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!